So, in this video I would like to talk a little bit about different um, ways you can prepare yourself to um, uh, help a person who is afflicted by black magic or curses or negative spirits. So I talked earlier about these uh, four levels of energy. So I'll repeat it again from uh, elemental energies, life force, astral and higher energies. And on all of these four levels there can be a battleground, but these battlegrounds are separate from each other. So it's important to find out which is going to be the main battleground and where should be yeah, the most of your awareness or the most of your preparation. If you know where, um, on which level you're going to um, act, then it's also very important to try to gather allies on that level and tools on that level. So um, finding allies can be both physical allies, they can be like friends who you will yeah, create a prayer circle with or do a ritual with or who will some other way um, yeah, create a supportive or safe atmosphere or place uh, or energy around you and the, and the client to um, uh, yeah, to help with the work and yeah I cannot stress enough how important this is because the amount of energy you can generate is very limited and also very unbalanced because I have blind spots I have yeah instabilities and if you have two people you cover each other's blind spots and compensate each other's instability so two people often more than twice as powerful and if you go up to three or four people then yeah the amount of blind spots yeah are in a way halved and halved and halved uh, again and again and again so yeah you really can create a very strong fortress with uh, with a small group so the it's really a, a power multiplication even if the other people are not actively engaged just having their energies available to you can really mean a lot and do a lot uh, by having them for instance um, run defense while you run offense or one person maintains the, the area one person uh, takes care of the uh, of the client and the other person uh, assists you in uh, removing the curse or the evil spirit for instance or another person will is there even to call for more assistance and provide you with the tools which are needed so if you can get the team together and that is great if you can't well then you'll have to make do with what you have in general what you see is that people start out needing a lot of tools and slowly but surely they start integrating uh, these tools into their own energy bodies um, so a tool is in a way uh, also a teacher how to do something until you can do it yourself you will need that tool so i will start with uh, talismans talismans are things which in a way protect you give you a kind of a stability so here is a very popular one this is the pentagram and this is a pentagram with a circle around it, actually a double circle around it. So the pentagram is a symbol of, in a way, the, the heart or the spirit controlling the elements, which are the, the legs, you could say. So the pentagram has a heart and then the elements around it with the... Uh, Typical elements are uh, earth, water, air, fire, and then in a way the ether, the, the life force, all controlled by the spirit. And often circles are seen as uh, binding, or containing, or harmonizing. So the circle in itself is already a very powerful protective symbol. And the pentagram is a very good way, in a way, of indeed harnessing all those powers and to yeah put it in this protective circle so that if an energy comes into the pentagram and uh, yeah it 
will then be in a way absorbed by the pentagram and put into this protective circle so that in a way others attacks can be used to strengthen your own protection so things which break too ultimately are recycled into strengthening your protection so pentagram very good tool another tool which can be used is in a way the tree uh, trees are naturally um, yeah, picking up energies and grounding them and they also create very strong auras very strong energy fields around them so you can use different types of wood and these different types of tree or wood um, can heal uh, can harmonize the energy can protect things you they can also help you to create spells to weave spells to perform healings better so different types of tree or etherical oil um, they can be a really really good protection and assistance in uh, yeah whatever you're doing the last type of talisman which i want to uh, show here this is the celtic knot and it's just one uh, example of a labyrinth so the more complex energies they tend to get um, tied up in labyrinths um, so you can see that in a way if an energy is a natural energy it is like a very small grain energy so it is not crystallized it just flows naturally it's, it's very good at permeating everything life force just flows energy of the earth just flows through everything it permeates things but if things are more complex such as a curse or a spirit or something like this then it is no longer as liquid it's kind of a crystallized form it cannot go through these little holes or uh, yeah bend itself out of shape as easily and this is basically what uh, um, something like a, uh, a labyrinth does it allows these uncomplex energies to yeah to go through but the more complex energies can't go through so putting yourself inside a labyrinth is a very good way of uh, yeah protecting yourself or shielding yourself from your environment and obviously for all these things it is important that they don't just exist on a physical level but also on an energetic level so that if you're working with a specific type of energy then the labyrinth should exist on that level of energy um, so if you're working with an astral force then you should create an astral labyrinth or charge your your labyrinth with astral energies so it won't be penetrated that easily so protection is always step for step one because if you're unable to do anything then the battle is lost and usually these battles are not won with one blow they often take weeks or months uh, if you're lucky the battle is over in a few days but spirits and uh, uh, magicians tend to be kind of tenacious uh, because it takes a lot of yeah power discipline to become a magician to learn to to work with these types of magic so there are yeah people with a lot of patience with a lot of discipline who don't give up easily so besides protecting yourself with these things it's also important to have some things which enhance your power so i talked already about getting allies um, but it's also possible to use blessed objects like for instance um, this um, this is a symbol of the hammer of thor a great friend of mankind protector of mankind and very useful it has a very strong energy so it can help you in a way to smash other energetic structures like curses um, so by wearing symbols like this blessed objects the 
energy which is in the object will also yeah, in a way flow into you and become part of your energy body giving you a similar power so this can be compared a little bit to the people who are allowing another spirit to take possession of their body but instead of allowing Thor to take possession of my body I'm just using an object which is blessed and it can also be done of course with a Christian object like the crucifix for instance this is also a very powerful tool and the nice thing of the crucifix this is a, a golden crucifix is that it is not just empowering but also in a way harmonizing and protective so it works both as an amulet which gives you powers and a talisman which gives you protection Um, another um, way you can you can work is like in a way amulets they put the blessed power directly in your body but you can also work with a blessed object like for instance this is an antler and the antler can also be used instead of your hands so for instance if there is a curse instead of in a way trying to grab it out of the aura with my hands and then creating the risk that it will flow into my energy body and uh, mess up my energy body and block my chakras and my energy channels I could for instance use the antler to say like okay if there is a curse there I will scoop it up with the antler the antler has in a way a lot of exists on a lot of different levels of energy it is connected to a spirit who will assist me and control the energy of the antler and this way I can you know I scoop things out of the energy body without risking my own energy body there is a possibility that in a way the antler itself will carry the curse and become corrupted on other things then I would have to find another antler but that's better than it happening to me and of course with shamanic objects don't take things against their will um, only use things where the spirit is actually willing to do that don't go doing black magic and binding spirits to your shamanic objects I hate that and if I find out that you're doing that I will free that spirit so it really really upsets me that so many shamans are abusing nature and nature spirits that way I know many of people doing that are unconscious and they want to work with nature but they yeah just take too many liberties okay in the next video I will talk a little bit about the more offensive tools <laughs>